you need to show that this guy here is approaches zero as n goes to infinity, right? And this is one of the properties I proved using property one, right? You can write this as the variance of k hat plus the square of the bias. Okay. A uh, lot of people made a mistake. I don't know why. Why you? Some a lot of people said this is variance minus. I don't know where you get the minus from, guys. I pro I I proved in I proved property one some time ago. It's variance plus, not not minus. Okay. I don't know where you get the minus from. Right? It should be plus. The square. I did not reduce any mark for this, but if you do this again, I will, I will really deduce mark. Okay, always remember it's variance plus, not variance minus, okay? So that's one, one mistake. Then the second thing, to find the variance, uh, to find the variance of k hat, you can use the, you can use the property that uh, you can call okay. You can use this use this property where where z equal to k prime. Okay. Now to find each of these guys. So for example, to find the expectation of k uh, z squared, you just need to integrate z squared times the density of z dz. Now again, I, I mentioned this last week, or was it last week? Yeah. The limits of integration should be from k to infinity. Okay, this is the PDF of z. Okay. The limits of integration should be from k to infinity. And again, some people I mean, in spite of me telling you last week that the limits, some people got the wrong limits. So the limits, so the limits, should be, should be from k to infinity. I don't know why, why you, ch I mean, yet for the second time, you are, some of you, uh, some of you, the limits were not correct, right, for the second time. So I, I really don't know why, because I told you last week, I told you last week that the limits should be from k to infinity, right? Okay, so this is the second comment I have on the uh, question number six, all right? Okay, guys. All right, now let me uh, let me go through what I did on Tuesday, if you are not here. On Tuesday, I did exa more examples on MLEs, and I also I also listed some properties of MLEs, namely the limit of the bias of MLE is zero, which means that MLE is asymptotically unbiased. Second, uh, the limit of the MLC of MLE is zero, which means that M MLE is always consistent. Number three is that this guy here, root of n times the MLE minus the parameter, always approaches a normal random variable as n approaches infinity. And this is known as the asymptotic, asymptotic normality. All right? That's number three. Number four is this one that if you have a, a function g, which is one-to-one, one, don't tell me you don't know what one-to-one one is. You should know. A one-to-one one basically means that for every x, there's only one y, okay? That's what basically means. So if g is a one-to-one one function, and theta hat is MLE of theta, then g of theta hat is MLE of g of theta. And this is known as the invariance property or invariance principle 
of MLE. So these are four properties I talked about on Tuesday. Then I did two examples. This is one example I did, example nine. This is example 10, okay? Then, then I moved on to a new topic, which is conference interval. Well, this is a really important topic because number one is it, it will come in the exam. Number two, it is important for the coursework, which is due on the 21st of April, all right? Conference intervals are important um, because you don't, I mean, in usually you, you don't like to give a point estimate, like for example, the temperature like you, you can't say exactly six degrees cent centigrade. I mean, it cannot possibly be true just to say that it is six. So it's maybe six plus or minus point 0.1 or plus or minus point 0.2. So that's where the confidence intervals comes in, right? Then I defined a few things. The first one, the definition of a confidence interval is the interval made up of L and U. L is the low limit. U is the upper limit, and it must satisfy this equation here, that the probability theta is a parameter, the probability that the parameter theta is between L and U must be 1 minus alpha. So this confidence interval is known as the 100 times 1 minus alpha confidence interval. And these are the confidence limits, the lower limit and the upper limit. The coverage probability, this is the coverage probability, and the confidence length is just the difference between the upper limit and the lower limit. All right, before I talk more about this, before I talk more about this, I needed to refresh, I needed to refresh your memory on percentiles or quantiles um, for three distributions, the normal, the student's t and the chi squared. I mean, we talked about all three earlier, but I just wanted you to refresh, right? So starting with the normal distribution, um, starting with the normal distribution, um, all of you know that it's symmetric, it's bell-shaped. So this point here, Z alpha, is the point to the left of it, to the left of the point, you have an area of alpha. So, so this area here that I've shaded is equal to alpha, right? And this notation here, it denotes the percentile or the quantile with the area of alpha to the left of it. It can also be denoted, it can also be denoted by this notation. All right, and in this, diagram, I've chosen this and this to be equal to alpha by two. So by the definition of a percentile, this point here will be Z subscript alpha by two, and this point here will be Z subscript one minus alpha by two, because one minus alpha by two is the area to the left of this, and alpha by two is the area to the left of this. And because, because the normal PDF is symmetric, these two are equal except for the negative sign. So this is minus of this, right? You follow me guys or not? And because these two make up alpha by two, the area in the middle must be, must be what? This area here must be one, one minus alpha, okay? You follow me, okay? Right. So that's for the normal distribution. Now, I don't know whether I mentioned this before when I talked about the normal. Uh, let me just, just give you some, some examples of how to read. how to read uh, normal. So for example, if you want to read uh, Z or Z, say 0 0.9, right? Okay, what you need to do is this. You just got, this is the table. I showed you this before, I think, a long time ago. So what you do is, if you want to 
want to read. If you want to read this guy here, right, what you need to do is you need to look for 0 0.9 inside the table. So the closest you can get is what? So this is approximately, so let me use the approximate sign here. Do, do, do you follow what I'm saying? It's, it's approximately 1.28. Do, do you see how I got it? I mean, it's not. And if you want to read something like Z, say 0 0.1. I mean, 0 0.1 is not in the table. But because of symmetry, because of symmetry, this is the same as Okay, by symmetry, this, these two are equal, right? So this is minus z, 0 0.9, which is minus 1.28. All right? And another example, let's say, is z 0 0.999. So if you want to read that, you look for 0 0.99, which is the closest you can get to So it's approximately. All right. So this is how you will read the percentiles or the quantiles of a, of a standard normal variable. All right. Just use the tables. Okay. All right, guys. I know it's, it sounds like something you've done in in your early years. All right. The next thing. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the is, is, is it students T. Yeah, the students. For the students T distribution, the density, I, I think I showed you this before in, when I talked about this a long time ago. Excuse me for my by inability to draw a picture. Right? So suppose this is the PDF of a of a student T distribution with a degree of freedom, right? Okay. And so this did not say so, so and suppose Suppose this this area. Suppose this is this is uh, T A comma alpha, right? So in other words, the area to the left of it, the area to the left is equal to alpha, right? This area is alpha, right? All right, so this is the percentile of a, of a T random variable, a student's T random variable, with alpha is denoting the probability to the left, to, to the left of the point, right? And similarly, when you have, let me draw another picture, hug guys. When you have um, something like this, Yet again, this is the this is the PDF of a of a T variable with a degree of freedom. And suppose you have two points, one here and one here. And um, and suppose this area here is 
is alpha by 2 and that this area here is also alpha by 2. All right, so by definition of a percentile that this must be this must be T A 1 minus alpha by 2. Do, do you see why? Because the 1 minus alpha by 1 minus alpha by 2 is the area to the left. It's always you always look for the area to the left of the point because if this er, if this area is alpha by 2, 1 minus alpha by 2 is the area to the left, right? And similarly, th this point here by definition will be T A alpha by 2. And again, because students T is a, is a symmetric It's a symmetric distribution, right? These two are equal to each other except for the negative sign. So, in other words, T A alpha by 2 is equal to minus of T A 1 minus alpha by 2. You follow me? Yeah. Is that clear? Remember, when you look for percentiles or quantiles, you always look for the area to the left of the point. Okay? Okay, so this is the picture here we have. It's for the P distribution. Now, let's, let's look at a couple of examples. Um, <coughs> Let's look at a couple of examples on the T. So suppose you want to find T1 at 0 point. Say 0 0.9, OK? Now, this is one of the tables I showed you this before. Uh, right, so T1 at 0 0.9 according to this table it will be easy to read yeah it's 3.078 and suppose you want to read read this which is clearly not in the table oh, is it in the table i don't think it is it is not in the table so you, here you will have to use the symmetry the fact that the student's t is a symmetric distribution. So this will be minus of t1, 0 0.9. So this would be minus 3.078. Okay. Another example would be t, say, 10, 0 0.99. So this is really, really easy and straightforward to find the percentiles of a T distribution. Right. Okay. All right. Now this is for the T. Um, right. The next one and the the final one is the chi-square distribution, which which I talked about before a long time ago. You may recall. So this is the chi square the chi square distribution and you might recall that I mentioned that the chi square is not a symmetric distribution is instead is skewed is a skewed uh, is a skewed distribution right and the and the PDF looks something like this, right? So this is the the typical shape, the typical shape of a PDF of of a chi squared uh, random variable with a degree of freedom. So suppose, right? Suppose this area here. So 
Suppose this area here is, a, is equal to alpha. In this case, this point here will be denoted by chi squared with a degree of freedom and alpha to the left, right? So remember, remember always, it's the area to the left that counts, right? Alpha corresponds to the area to the left, right? Now, when, when you have two points, so once again, suppose you have a chi squared uh, PDF. So this is the PDF of of a chi squared variable. Now suppose now you have two points, this one and this one, and and this area. Let's suppose that this area is alpha by two, and this area is also alpha by 2, right? Then this point here will be denoted by A, comma, the area to the left of this point, which is, because this is alpha by 2, the area to the left must be 1, one minus alpha by 2. You follow me? Yeah? And similarly, this point will be denoted by okay. Now, because the chi squared is a, is not a symmetric distribution, they are, they are in general these two are not equal in magnitude, so they are not equal. Okay. All right. But this area will be. This, this area here will be 1 minus alpha. All right, guys. You, 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 follow, you, you follow what I'm talking about, I hope. So, yeah. so this is the picture for, for what is uh, This is the picture for the class square. Now, once again, if you want to read, if you want to read the percentiles of the quantiles, it's easy to do using this table here, which I showed you a long time ago, you may recall. So this is the table for the this is the table for the um, the dense, uh, the percentiles of a chi squared variable. So, for example, if you want to read chi squared with one degree of freedom and 0 0.9, all right, that will be. Well, 0 0.9 is not here, so let's say 0 0.99. Okay, so that will be 6.635. Okay. And if you want to read chi squared 1 with, say, 0 0.01, right, um, that would be, be 0, actually. So it's 0 0.000. And as you can see, these two are not equal in magnitude because, because of the fact that the chi squared density is not a symmetric. It's not a symmetric density. Okay? Let's get back to confidence interval. I mean, the reason I talked about these percentiles is because they are going to come in the confidence interval, which I will start again. Okay, I will start talking about it right now. Okay, so let's um, let's first of all talk about.
Okay, number one. I'm, I'm going to talk about one sample conference interval to start with. Number, suppose, Okay, suppose you have a random sample from a normal distribution with, with the mu, mu is, remember mu is the population mean, unknown, but the population variance is known, right? And what I want to do here is to construct a confidence interval for mu, which is unknown, right? Now, you may remember when I talked about the normal distribution, one of the properties I mentioned to you guys I don't know whether you look back in the notes or not, but one of the properties I mentioned to you is the following, that X bar, which is the sample mean, right, follows the normal distribution with parameters. Do, do, do you guys remember this property or not? This is one of the properties I mentioned when I talked about the normal distribution a while ago, right? Okay. If you don't remember, just please, please look. Uh, it's, it's in both the printed notes and also in the handwritten notes. I mean, okay, this implies that X bar minus mu will have, will have the normal distribution with zero mean and variance this, okay? And this implies that x bar minus mu divided by sigma by root of n will have the standard normal distribution. Right? You follow me so far? Now, this is where I'm going to return to the percentiles. So let me go back to what I talked about today. You remember this. This is what I just talked about, okay? This is the standard normal PDF, standard normal PDF. And if you look at the bottom figure here, there are two points on the x-axis and between them the area is 1 minus alpha. Between these two points you have an area of 1 minus alpha. So, because this has a standard normal, right, this implies the following. If you, if you look at the picture, right, you will see that the probability that Right? You see what I'm, what I'm saying here? The probability that this guy, because this guy has the standard normal, the probability that this lies between these two points must be 1 minus alpha. Right? Which is, which is the middle area here. Between these two points, the area is 1 minus alpha. Okay. So, so this implies... See, I'm rearranging these two terms. And finally, if you, if you rearrange this, this is what you will get. You will get
Um, Right, you get this, and and f and one more time, I'm gonna. Okay, at the next step, I'm gonna replace this guy here by. By using the fact that that this guy here is equal to minus. Okay by using this you can you can replace let me take this away you can replace this guy Do you see what I've done? I have replaced z alpha by 2 by minus of z1 minus alpha by 2. So this minus here becomes a plus, right? Okay. So, so what we have shown so far is the following. Hence, We have shown that 100 times 1 minus alpha CI confidence interval, confidence interval for mu is the following. Right. So this is this is how you construct confidence interval. So to construct a confidence interval, you need to start with a distributional statement, right? And then come to a statement like this. And from this statement, you can see immediately that you can see immediately from this that this must be the confidence interval for mu, right? All right. So that's. Now let's consider the case. Are you guys okay with that or not? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Number two is I'm going to consider the following. Where? Remember, just to remind you. The case I consider here. Yeah. Supposing IID is normal but unknown mu and known variance. But sometimes, sometimes we don't know the variance, right? So suppose, Right, so this is case number two where both the population mean, which is mu, and the population variance, which is sigma squared, are unknown, right? And we want to construct a confidence interval for mu. Now, this is where you really need to remember what we taught. 
what I, what I taught you. Um, okay, the first thing is that the first thing you should remember is that is this, right? You be is okay. This you probably remember this from. Um, so let me see. C my not on normal distribution, right? And this implies that x bar minus mu mm -hmm. and this implies that I don't know whether you guys remember or not, but do you, do you rem remember this result? This I talked about it. This is one of the result one of the result I talked about in the when I talked about the student's T distribution. Do you remember this or no? You already forgot. You guys okay? Yeah. Where S S is the sample standard deviation is defined as with N minus one in the bottom, not N. Okay. Okay. I mean, if you don't remember this, just just look back, please. I mean, because when we talk about confidence interval, you need to really remember everything we talked about with respect to normal chi squared and student's t, right? Okay. So this implies. So you can say that because this has a T distribution, right, the area between uh, T Are you guys with me or not? Yeah. All right. Okay. So this is the same as saying that the probability that See what I've done. Okay. Okay. And next, I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to rearrange this to have mu in the middle. 
right? So this will be um, if you take the mean to this, um, it will be like this. Sorry, S divided by root of N T Okay. And um, x bar minus s by root of n okay and this is equal to 1 minus alpha okay now in the next step in the next step I'm going to use the I'm going to use the property of symmetry which says that that T is equal to minus of right remember because the students T is a symmetric density they are equal in magnitude right so so this implies that that the probability So this minus becomes a plus, okay? Okay. You with me? So hence Uh, 100 times 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for mu is the lower limit will be x bar minus s by root of n yes and the upper limit will be x bar plus s by root of n Okay. Are you with me? So this is the confidence interval for mu, the population mean when the population variance is unknown, right? You guys okay or not? Hmm? I hope you follow this. I mean, so all right, guys. Now the next thing, so there's number two. Number three, I'm gonna talk um Number three is the following. Number three is suppose X one Right. So it's same as number two, that you have a random sample from a normal with both the population mean and the population variance unknown, right? And we want to find, in this case, we want to find the confidence interval for sigma squared, not mu, right? Now, this is where you need to really remember what I talked about. I mean, let me, let me try to check your memory. Um, the 
do you guys remember what distribution this has huh? it has what hello guys what distribution does this have we talked about this ages ago it shouldn't take you so long come on guys talk to me it has yes i'm sure i'm sure you know it is the chi square distribution with n minus 1 i mean i so c come on guys don't you, don't you remember i mean we we talk, we spend like couple of lectures talking about the chi square distribution right okay so what this implies is that now you should go back to Okay, so so what I'm going to say is that the probability that the probability no. Oh. What did I shift is alpha by two. You should have corrected me. This is alpha by two, so this should be alpha by two. Okay. Sorry, guys. You you didn't you didn't see. right the probability that this guy here lies between this point and um, and this point must be equal to 1 minus alpha yeah you follow me yeah yes come on guys talk to me yeah so now if you rearrange this statement as a statement on sigma squared if you if you rearrange this as a statement on sigma squared you will get the following you will get the probability that All right, you see what I've done. Shh. You ha I have rearranged this one as a statement on sigma squared. So this is what you get, right? So, so what I'm going to do is what I'm going to say next is is routine, right? Hence, a hundred times one minus alpha. percent ci4 sigma squared is the following and the lower limit is going to be this this is the lower limit and the upper limit come on guys just give me a sec you not in a hurry to the for lunch and the upper limit is this one okay
Okay, guys. Any questions so far on this? Are you okay? Everybody okay on this? All right. So next time I see you, I will talk about one more conference interval, right? Okay. So have a good weekend. Any questions? Uh, uh, by the way, there are two lab sessions today, and there's a lab session tomorrow. So if you haven't been to any of the lab sessions, please do come. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. All right, if you haven't been to any of the lab sessions, could you please come for the ones today or tomorrow? Sorry to take your time. Are there a lot of people coming to your classes? My first because lecture this week. Oh, it's your first? First lecture this oh. week, yeah. Because of the coronavirus, and, and a lot of people not coming. Yeah, I'm stressed as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. rest of the class share to another lecture. She's been distracted, so okay. I've got the strike machines. Thank you.